Lisa? Who's Lisa?
were you ever involved in any Ouija board cases or experiences? If you could just maybe Numerous. tell us a little about that. In that house, it was horrible. It was so scary and so horrible. And Ed and I spent nights in that home. We called a, a Catholic priest. The family was Catholic. We called a Catholic priest. And during the midst of it, we had a lecture at University of Maine. Maine. No sleep. We, had, we went up and, and gave the lecture. Didn't stay overnight and came back home again. And the priest stayed there during that period of time with us. And the furniture that would be in the room would go like this. Like you, like you were um, moving it, you know how, how how you move a heavy piece of furniture like this, moving it right across the room. Ed, Ed went into the room this one night, and it 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 took it, it went fast. It went very 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 fast, and he was commanding in the name of Jesus Christ for what was there to leave. And when he did, these chairs, the two love seats that were on either side of the fireplace, came and pinned him right into the corner. Now, I was in the boy's bedroom. The family were in the master bedroom in back of me. Ed had been there. Ed had been there with the mother, the father, the daughter, the son, and the family dog. And that Ed commanded in the name of Jesus Christ for what was there to make itself known or to get out. That bed with Ed, two men, the mother, the daughter, the son, on it rose right up to the ceiling. And I was then they, they they did it again and he came he kept commanding in the name of Jesus Christ for it to leave and to go back to where it came from. So the boy came in and he lay down on the bed. When Ed started I, I turned over so I could see the boy. He levitated right off his bed and went flying right out the door and cut his head here. And they, the priest and the father and the mother and everything was taking care of him. And here's my bed rocking back and forth. The sliding doors the large sliding doors dematerialized, dematerialized. And you believe all of that was opened up or began? Through the Ouija board. They were church-going people, and there was absolutely no way other than that Ouija board. When we were at Hasbro, we found out that 13 million Ouija boards have been made since 1967. Most of them are bought, bought like at Christmas time for kids to have fun with. That isn't anything to have fun with. That definitely is nothing to have fun with. If, if we were trying to help people, <coughs> to help people get rid of something in a home, and we go on there and it keeps changing, Am I true? Yeah, we have we have a lot of books already. Yeah, I think you have a lot of stories to tell. Yeah. Board here. 
Are we all worried? Tara Lawson and her brother talked their mother into buying a Ouija board. We just got a Parker Brothers Ouija board at the toy store, and um, we didn't realize that, you know, it was more than just a toy. What started out as an innocent fascination turned Tara's life into a nightmare filled with oppression. An evil presence made itself known almost immediately. It was moved. And we were looking up at my dad, just kind of laughing, like, look, and we're not doing it. I said, we're not playing this anymore. I said, I'm getting rid of it. Tara's dad hid the board. It wasn't long, though, before Tara found it and secretly began playing again. To me, it was just kind of something that was like a game, something that was just fun for me. Hey, Lisa, who's Lisa? What I was opening myself up to, that it was something demonic, something evil. But the more she played, the more frightened she became. Sleep, knowing it was under there. She came back and said, you know, I found that Ouija board. I've been... father burned the Ouija board but a few years later she was drawn back to it again this time she made her own Ouija board with a friend that one 
was even more powerful than the one before, moved even stronger. It would say all things. So being teenage girls, we just would kind of laugh and feel kind of uncomfortable, but we kept, we'd keep playing. And I could tell it was spelling something, but it was going so fast, I couldn't tell what it was spelling, but I saw my name. And it was saying, I'm going to kill you, Tara. I'm going to kill you, Tara, over and over. We ended up saying, um, our Father which art in heaven, that's all we really knew to say. And uh, it went to goodbye immediately. She stopped playing with the Ouija board, but Tara's life was dominated by loneliness and fear. Depression. I opened that door to evil into my life. It brought in. So, guys, Ouija board. Found it at a toy store. And I'm thinking about using it, I don't know, I'm not sure. A mysterious, mystifying game. Ooh. And it glows in the dark. So, I don't know, what's your guys' opinion? I mean, you know, I'm not sure. I've heard a lot of, don't use it, no, stop, ah, it's terrible, ooh. And then I've heard a lot of, yeah, use the Ouija board, use it, use it. So I don't know, I don't know, tell me, what do you guys think? Tell me. <laughs>
on the punch Is anyone with us? What's going on? <laughs> What's going on? I can't do that. Turn on the light. Turn on the light. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> this can't happen. What if one of us did? Holy crap. <laughs> what's wrong with oh you? God. <laughs> Mary, what's happening? Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Get away. Get away. Get away. My lens is long, so okay. I can get it.
Thank you. The Ouija board, as we know, it started off as a toy created by Elijah Bond and Charles Kennard and is still sold as a game. So how do you explain the movement of glass and the what spirits then? What is it? The truth is that the movement of the Ouija board and expectation. It has nothing to do with the paranormal.
My birthday is January 22nd, 1971. Oh my God. Um, Can you ask them? Um, sure, anything. You ask it. Um, what do I do with the gift I have when someone yeah. dies? What am I supposed to do with that? Um, is Carol had the gift of premonition of people who are going to pass to the next life? Because she seems to have had experiences seeing who's going to die or before the they thought. die. The, the thought. Story, yes. And she wants to use it for good. Does she have that gift? Yes, thank you. Um, should she try to, do, how should she help people with it? Is there any <laughs> word you could use to help? Or how could she help doing that? Help people with that gift? Ouija board, maybe saying you have to do the Ouija board. Uh, you know yeah. I mean? Jeez. Um, yeah. How about this uh, last thing? This will be interesting. Ready? Um, okay. Uh, last question um, is this. Um, it, this is a very important question. The Ouija board, it goes back a couple hundred years, William Fold and Bond and all these other people. Is there some other thing from the past that the Ouija board started in, in Egypt, in India, somewhere? Some oracle artifact that was discovered, or does it start with, in the 1800s and stuff? In other words, is it more ancient than we think, yes or no? Is the Ouija board more ancient than we think? Can you tell us where in the world it started? Where? China, America, India, Egypt, where? You, okay. All right, so United States is started in. Yes. What year did it truly get created, discovered, invented? Truly, what year was it? Yeah, right. Yeah, sorry. You're doing great. So yeah, thank you. Or, sorry. Five. Five. Five, one, or? Five. Uh, Maybe she misplaced the zero for an O. Yeah. Um, or an O for a zero. How about this? Was it in the 1800s? Or yeah. was it in the 1800s or was it... Uh, time. Yeah, like what year? What, what, what year? Around what year? Um, X, maybe Roman numerals. X? X, oh, that's yeah. true. 1,000. No, no, that's, that's X. Roman numeral. Is 10 to 1. One, mm -hmm. okay, and, yeah. Six, that's interesting. Sixteen hundred and what? Fifty. Four. Or four. Or four, okay. In that year, what is the name of the man or woman 
last name of the man and woman who created, invented, discovered this incredible device, oracle. I mean, who, 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 who's the name? S. S. Okay. T. S. We need more help there. The name of the last name of the person who did it. S. Do you, do you know who, who is the creator of the, of the Ouija board? It's okay if you don't. You do? Good. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, we're doing a film about it and trying to teach the world about it. it, it we know William Fold and Bond and, and all these people and uh, Kennard. Who is the person, man or woman, who created the Ouija board? Who had the first inspiration? Or was it discovered? I mean, who's the person? W. W. A. W. Did you? A. M. A. M. A. It seemed like W. Oh, w. A. W. A. Mm -hmm. W. A. You mark. T. What? W. A. T. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. W A T. R. W A T R. W A T R. Mm -hmm. Ort. Ort. T. What? Ort. W A R T T. Wharton. How about this? Uh, <laughs> right? Is with the Ouija board invented, discovered, or really created by someone other than Elijah Bond, William Fold, Kennard, or any of these other people that have claimed to invent it? Is it somebody else? Okay, um, is that person um, uh, someone that lived in ancient times, uh, a long time ago? Okay, and um, how old is the Ouija board? It's the year 2011 right now. How old is the Ouija board? How long since it was first created? Hundreds, thousands of years, how, long, how old? One or two, yeah. Looks like more like one. Seven. One, seven, yeah. Mm -hmm. How old? Four. Four. One seven, seven four eight. Seventeen forty eight. So, Seventeen forty eight. It was created. Yes. Wow. And seventeen forty eight was created in the United States. Yes. No, okay. Uh, it's seven. It's one thousand seven hundred and forty-eight years old.
Lisa was Lisa.
were you ever involved in any Ouija board cases or experiences? If you could just maybe Numerous. tell us a little about that. That house, it was horrible. It was so scary and so horrible. And Ed and I spent nights in that home. We called a, a Catholic priest. The family was Catholic. We called a Catholic priest. And during the midst of it, we had a lecture at University of Maine. Maine. No sleep. We, we went up and, and gave the lecture. Didn't stay overnight and came back home again. And the priest stayed there during that period of time with us. And the furniture that would be in the room would go like this. Like you, like you were um, moving it. You know how, how, how you move a heavy piece of furniture like this? Moving it right across the room. Ed, Ed went into the room this one night and it, it, it took, it, it went fast. It went very, very, very fast and he was commanding in the name of Jesus Christ for what was there to leave. And when he did, these chairs, the two love seats that were on either side of the fireplace, came and pinned him right into the corner. Now, I was in the boy's bedroom. The family were in the master bedroom in back of me. Ed had been there. Ed had been there with the mother, the father, the daughter, the son, and the family dog. And that Ed commanded in the name of Jesus Christ for what was there to make itself known or to get out. That bed with Ed, two men, the mother, the daughter, the son, on it, rose right up to the ceiling. And I was, then they, they, they did it again and he came, he kept commanding in the name of Jesus Christ for it to leave and to go back to where it came from. So the boy came in and he lay down on the bed. When Ed started, I, I turned over so I could see the boy. He levitated right off his bed and went flying right out the door and cut his head here and they, the priest and the father and the mother and everything was taking care of him. And here's my bed rocking back and forth. The sliding doors, the large sliding doors dematerialized, dematerialized. And you believe all of that was opened up or began? Through the Ouija board. They were church going people and there was absolutely no way other than that Ouija board. When we were at Hasbro, we found out that 13 million Ouija boards have been made since 1967. Wow. Most of them are bought, bought like at Christmas time for kids to have fun with. That isn't anything to have fun with. That definitely is nothing to have fun with. If, if we were trying to help people, <coughs> to help people get rid of something in a home. And we go on there and it keeps changing. Yeah. Am I true? Yeah, we have we have a lot of books already. Yeah, I think you have a lot of stories to tell. Yeah. Well, he's probably upset. You know the routine? Yeah. We have an actual board here. 
Tara Lawson and her brother talked their mother into buying a Ouija board. We just got a Parker Brothers Ouija board at the toy store, and um, we didn't realize that, you know, it was more than just a toy. What started out as an innocent fascination turned Tara's life into a nightmare filled with oppression. An evil presence made itself known almost immediately. It was moved. And we were looking up at my dad, just kind of laughing, like, look, and we're not doing it. And I said, we're not playing this anymore. I said, I'm getting rid of it. Tara's dad hid the board. It wasn't long, though, before Tara found it and secretly began playing again. To me, it was just kind of something that was like a game, something that was just fun for me. Hey, Lisa, who's Lisa? what I was opening myself up to, that it was something demonic, something evil. But the more she played, the more frightened she became. Sleep, knowing it was under there. She came back and said, you know, I found that Ouija board. I've been... father burned the Ouija board but a few years later she was drawn back to it again this time she made her own Ouija board with a friend that one 
was even more powerful than the one before, moved even stronger. It would say all things. So being teenage girls, we just would kind of laugh and feel kind of uncomfortable, but we kept. Hey, Lisa, where's Lisa? Thank <laughs> you. 
were you ever involved in any Ouija board cases or experiences? If you could just maybe Numerous. tell us a little about that. That house, it was horrible. It was so scary and so horrible. And Ed and I spent nights in that home. We called a, a Catholic priest. The family was Catholic. We called a Catholic priest. And during the midst of it, we had a lecture at University of Maine. Maine. No sleep. We, had, we went up and, and gave the lecture. Didn't stay overnight and came back home again. And the priest stayed there during that period of time with us. And the furniture that would be in the room would go like this. Like you, like you were um, moving it, you know how, how how you move a heavy piece of furniture like this, moving it right across the room. Ed, Ed went into the room this one night, and it 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 took it, it went fast. It went very 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 fast, and he was commanding in the name of Jesus Christ for what was there to leave. And when he did, these chairs, the two love seats that were on either side of the fireplace, came and pinned him right into the corner. Now, I was in the boy's bedroom. The family were in the master bedroom in back of me. Ed had been there. Ed had been there with the mother, the father, the daughter, the son, and the family dog. And that Ed commanded in the name of Jesus Christ for what was there to make itself known or to get out. That bed with Ed, two men, the mother, the daughter, the son, on it rose right up to the ceiling. And I was then they, they they did it again and he came he kept commanding in the name of Jesus Christ for it to leave and to go back to where it came from. So the boy came in and he lay down on the bed. When Ed started I, I turned over so I could see the boy. He levitated right off his bed and went flying right out the door and cut his head here. And they, the priest and the father and the mother and everything was taking care of him. And here's my bed rocking back and forth. The sliding doors the large sliding doors dematerialized, dematerialized. And you believe all of that was opened up or began? Through the Ouija board. They were church going people and there was absolutely no way other than that Ouija board. When we were at Hasbro, we found out that 13 million Ouija boards have been made since 1967. Most of them are bought, bought like at Christmas time for kids to have fun with. That isn't anything to have fun with. That definitely is nothing to have fun with. If, if we were trying to help people, <coughs> to help people get rid of something in a home, and we go on there and it keeps changing, Am I true? Yeah, we have we have a lot of books already. Yeah, I think you have a lot of stories to tell. Yeah. Board here. 
Okay, so Carol does have psychic powers. Okay. How are you feeling? Do you feel it? Um, are you spirit? Are are you um, a uh, are you a woman? Yes, you are a woman. Okay. Um, can you tell us your name, Spirit? Thank you for contacting us. What's your name? S. Great. Thank you. S.
S O. S O. S O F. See where that's coming. There it is, I think. S O F. Three. S O F three. Uh, Sophie, I thought it was, it was Sophie. Is Sophie your name? S O F three. Maybe it meant an E, or maybe it meant. Yeah, yeah, it could be. Could be. It's Sophie. It's saying Sophie, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Although it's the sun there. What's that mean? Yeah. Uh, maybe you just missed the yes. Uh, you know, okay, okay for the name. Um, yeah, what type of gift does Carol have psychically? Is she a clairvoyant? Is she a. Uh, what What's she supposed to do with that? What is it? Or what's the word? What, kind of, what gift does she have? Gift of prophecy? Gift of what? Intuition? N. N. A. Not oh. available. Not A. Not available. Mm -hmm. yes. Um. Is um. Does the Ouija board work by contacting spirits? Yes or no? I'm not sure what that is. You know, it looks like it's going towards yes. If you were going to give us um, one word regarding uh, about the Ouija board, what would it be? Because uh, we're trying to make a movie about the Ouija board. What, what's one word to guide us to figure out how we can use this best? X. Well, or, maybe. Is it right under? Is it yeah, pointing? It, it, X or it could L. be L. L. I thought the L was yeah, exactly. pointing, so a lot of things yeah. that we misunderstood. Maybe it's L, yeah. Because it's supposed to point, not right, under. It's right. not a magnifying right, right, yeah, right. the new one. So maybe it was Sophie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because where was the one she pointed to? Three. Well, she three. Went to three. He's so, up here. Well, I don't, I don't know. know. Let's see. But well, if it so was pointing to this. Three. Or Q. Three could be something. Something, you know. It's it's significant just, in her yeah. life. You never know. She might be three years old. That's exactly, true. Exactly, that's true. Um, and maybe that's so why what, she's not spelling so L, correct, right? guys. Yeah, L. What else? E. E. O. O. L E O. Leo? Leo. Is that what? L E O? Leo. Leo. Well, maybe we're not done yet. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe. Maybe, maybe she's a Leo. Constellation. Maybe the. She's maybe like, she's told, tapping in. Or maybe. Is anyone Leo here? All right, room? yeah. There's a little thing upstairs about the different signs about. So maybe it has something to do with that. Well, she right. gave us. Maybe she's three. She's. Mike just trying to tell us when her birthday is. Her yeah, something. even though we're asking the Ouija board. Well, how old were you uh, when you passed away, uh, Sophie? She went to seven. Eight. Eight or seven? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe, or in. Is that it? Seven or seventy what or sixty something? Go this way. Seventeen. Or no, seventy one or sixty one. around there, mm -hmm. you had a full life, Sophie. 
You had a happy life? I'm really sick, Sophie. So she had a full happy life. I don't know if she was sick either one. I don't yeah, know. I guess we have to ask one um, question at a time. How about this? Um, uh, uh, I don't know anything about Carol. I just met her uh, tonight. Um, uh, is does yeah, Carol's middle name? Uh, what's the first letter of Carol's middle name? I just like to test, you know, just you know, because I don't know. Okay. Carol's middle name, first letter. Well. Sophia, we're impressed. <laughs> um, uh, what's the last digit to my... Uh, uh, actually, what's my birthday day? Um, it's, okay, it's in January. Uh, what, what day in January is my birthday? Because Carol doesn't know it. Mm -mm. So I'm, oh, so, two. And then the other number? My birthday is January 22nd, oh my God. Um, Can you ask them? Um, sure, anything. You ask it. Um, what do I do with the gift I have when someone yeah. dies? What am I supposed to do with that? Um, is Carol had the gift of premonition of people who are going to pass to the next life? Because she seems to have had experiences seeing who's going to die or before the they thought. die. The, the thought. Story, yes. And she wants to use it for good. Does she have that gift? Yes, thank you. Um, should she try to, do, how should she help people with it? Is there any <laughs> word you could use to help? How could she help doing that? Help.
You remember him from Haunting Evidence, great brown, all-around paranormal investigator, one of the co-authors of The Other Side, Patrick Burns. And of course, Ben Hansen from Sci-Fi's Fact or Faked. Ben has no idea what he's gotten himself into. Which is really funny, because a little later in the show, we're going to show him some pictures and ask him if they've been fact or faked. <laughs> and of course, from Psychic Kids, from all kinds of other great shows from Paranormal State, Mr. Chip Coffee. And to make Chip uncomfortable for the next 30 minutes, this alien. <laughs> As if that were necessary. It's your date. Need the microphone, guys. Thank you. All right, guys, let's, uh, let's start going right down the line. I want everyone to, to answer this question for me. If I weren't making a living in the paranormal, I would be... Go. I would be probably robbing museums or banks. Good. <laughs> Don't rob my bank. I was in the mortgage business 15 years. <laughs> I'd still be in financing. All right. Um, I would be in investments. Good. Fixing computers. Thank you. I'd probably go back to law school. All right. World needs another lawyer. <laughs> I'd be working as a traditional counselor. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Aww. Aww. It sucks with the heartstrings. All right. Ben, we, I, here's what I did throughout the, the day today. I was kind of walking around and asking people, what questions would you want to ask these folks? And uh, to save time, I jotted down a bunch of them. Uh, ben, you're up here with two psychics. How do you feel about psychics in general? I know you like to deal with the facts and stuff like that, but... Uh... <laughs> Go ahead. Pass me the microphone. <laughs> I've never been read before. Is that how you say it? Never been read? I've never been read. They knew you were going to so, say it. Uh, I don't know. Um, I, I'd like to, uh, to see it. Okay. All right. Well, tomorrow you can. We'll, we'll set something up. All right. Very good. So, guys, uh, I know a lot of you have been on TV, and I'm curious how you feel. Uh, what has television done as far as uh, paranormal investigation in general? I mean, a good thing, a bad thing. Do you think it's fa it fairly portrays what's really happening out there? Trying to jump around. You know, Chip, you were on a couple shows. Well, you have to take into consideration that everything is edited. You've got hours and hours and hours and hours of videotape that has to be condensed down into 22 or 44 minutes. Right. So, in order to keep it so an audience, a television viewing audience, can follow the story. There are some liberties that are taken with editing sometime, and uh, that's just the normal course of things. But I don't think it's harmed the investigative community too much. Okay. Yeah. I haven't decided if I'm on an infomercial yet, or I'm <laughs> waiting to be hypnotized up here. I don't know what's going on. Um, when I snap my fingers, you clock the chair. <laughs> Brave man. Yep. Hey, you know what? Uh, anything for the shot. And you know what, though? Because the, because the beautiful thing, you know? Is it, well, oh, on the other yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. He's thinking. Little I'm thinking. Thinking, thinking. You're donating your phone to this hey, Bobby, you know, when I took poker, I'm rolling or I'm folding. So I'm rolling. Uh, are you folding? I'm not folding. You, you got to know when to fold them. Yeah. And know when to hold them. Yeah. There you go. Know when to walk, walk away and when to fall. Yeah. And when you think it's full, never full. install yeah. your roller flag <laughs> When you're leaning it on the mooring, you fall over backwards. <laughs> Sorry, we we'll just do a little ambiance. <laughs> and then, oh, hold on, I just want to, I just want a static shot of you holding that <laughs> up off the drop. Okay. Yeah, 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 That's yeah, pretty yeah. classic. Yeah, that is very classic. Speaking of, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> hold on. And, then, and turn back and smile, too. Smile back, look back at us and smile. <laughs> like, so you get a good shot of this. It's gonna look back. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Alright. Okay, Take sure. Three, two, and one.
so much. Okay. Here you go, T. I, on your actually what I want to do is you it can scooch back a little bit like yeah ready a little bit yeah that's perfect okay all I want to do is get a little bit that's less all right. all right perfect yeah You're the yep this is perfect 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 I just want to also we can't prove it we can't recreate it but you know we learn as we go and we learn from the urban legends that have been passed on do you believe um Ouija board use could lead to possession. I have to actually think about that one too. Do I lead? It can be. Yes. Um, I do believe that it could lead to possession. It is up to the individual user to whether or not they're mentally unsound, physically unsound, under a lot of duress in their life. There's that little wormhole that's open in their mind that may allow a spirit to come through and take advantage of that. Do I believe that? Absolutely. As with ghost hunting, put yourself in a haunted situation, something may come through and affect you later on. I've seen it, I've been there, I've done that. Uh, possession is a very rare case, a very, very, very rare case. If you think about it, all the people from the spiritualist movement, again, our grandmothers and great-grandmothers and grandfathers, all did it and we didn't have a viral case of possession back then you know not everybody back then would have a demonologist on speed dial like we do now um, it, it life went on you know unfortunate events happen fires floods disasters just as they do now um, as far as the person who may have a possession uh, the stories that I've heard are few and far between and the, you do have to take certain measures to protect yourself, to do it the right way, just as a ghost hunter would investigate the right way. You introduce yourself, you set a couple ground rules, and you go from there. Do you believe there's any difference between using a Ouija board to communicate with the spirit world or uh, a K2 meter or doing EVPs? I absolutely think there's no difference between modern technology and the good old-fashioned masonite board and plastic Ouija board planchette. I, it, the technology has evolved. Um, I, I have seen the critics say that the modern equipment, the K2 meter, the ovalus, the puck, all of these pieces of equipment are ineffective. That it doesn't work, it's just purely coincidence, you know, like the Frank's box for instance. Um, I've seen with my own two eyes and heard with my ears things that have convinced me that these are legitimate pieces of equipment that may communicate with the dead. Not every time. Not every time. Not on cue. It's unpredictable. But so is the Ouija board. So I know for a fact, I know for a fact, a Ouija board is effective means of communication. If it never worked, millions of people, millions, would never have purchased a board. But it works. It's not just a game. It's an actual means of communication. You can take a marker, mark down a piece of paper, and it's considered a Ouija board. It's pretty amazing how something so simple can uh, yield such results. But the newer stuff, the newer stuff is, is it's good. It's another means of communication. Um, we have to make the vehicle of communication easy for the dead. There's no physical body, there's no organic manner. I'm sorry, there's no physical body, there's no organic matter. They don't have vocal cords. They can't just easily project communications. So they have to use something that's simple. Something with airwaves, something with sound, something with writing, physical letters. Um, there's so many different ways to do it. And do you think if, if there's a danger 
in communicating with spirits, is there an equal danger in using a K2 meter as using a Ouija board? Right, like, so are, are they you... all the same pretty much? Or if not, why? This is a qu um, the question between a lot of people in the paranormal is if you are doing EVP work, is it, is it the same as using a Ouija board? Of course, you are trying to communicate except for a different media. If you're asking an EVP question with a, with a tape recorder in your hand, when you play it back, you're hoping you get a message. What kills me is the people that are afraid to use the Ouija board but not afraid to do EVP work. Why? It's just another means of communication. It is just as bad to use a Ouija board as it is to do EVP work. We're asking ghosts with a Ouija board to spell out messages for us. We're asking ghosts with a recording device to say messages to us. So, in my opinion, it's all the same, no matter what. Perfect. And, um, you know, same thing with like a K2 meter, right? Right. You know, like you say, is anyone here? Blank. You know, it's just kind of funny. It's a great argument, though. I love that. Um, oh, but it's 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 ta it's not taboo mm -hmm. to do that. But it's so taboo. Ouija boards. I mean, everybody's opinion on Ouija boards. It's all because the movies have taught us that boards are just going to lead to demonic possession. Anything can lead to demonic possession. I mean, somebody under the influence of drugs and alcohol could lead to demonic possession. Anything negative is going to latch on to a human because of their weakness. It has nothing to do with the board with letters on it. That leads into another question. Do you think the board itself has any special power? I don't believe the Ouija board itself has any special power. Again, from my experiences, write pieces, I'm sorry, from my experiences I've been able to just simply write letters down on a plastic tablecloth and turn a shot glass upside down and, and it was moving around spelling out messages. Um, it is entertaining to hear the stories about how people have been told from a priest to bury the board and leave it out in moonlight and salt and the myriad of different methods of cleansing a board. Perhaps there's some truth to that and, and I'm not an expert on that, but I don't believe it's the board that's haunted itself. I think too many movies growing up as a child, too many movies like Witch Board and all these other movies have, have sort of brainwashed us into thinking that it's a vehicle. It's just a vehicle for spirits to communicate with us. Perfect. Do you want to do... Just wonderful stuff. Yeah, it's, it. it is perfect. Well, why are we going to do her, uh, that, the invention? Yeah, mm -hmm. well, when I, um, I, I, um, one last question. Okay, so we found out when we were at Hasbro that since 1967, 13 million Ouija boards have been produced. That's a lot. 13 yeah, so million. Like, I was hoping you would, you would tell me about that because I said millions of people have been using them, but thousands seem too small. Yeah. So 13 like, yeah, million. Yeah, so respond to that hearing. Just think 67. 67. Just in, just Do you guys seven. ask them if anyone ever writes them with their horror stories? I mean, have they ever, can they produce letters from people that said, this, this board ruined my life, I'm going to sue you? They, I mean, they can't. It's, letters are legally confidential between the people who send them, but yes, they tell me that they exist. <laughs> they do. How and, you guys, and, you, and you got William Fold letters, which is I, the same thing. Yeah, I have all the letters from 1890 to 1966. Every letter that every customer ever wrote in. Good, bad, and ugly. Did you read them? Oh, yeah, yeah. I've, tra I've transcribed them. That just They're bleeped. Really... I don't know if it's full or what. But that's okay. Um, that's interesting. I'd like to talk to you about that sometime, yeah. like what people have said. The okay. urban legends, you know. Is it a coincidence that their house just burnt down a week later? Or... You can see all kinds of things from people being... Um, um, Becoming pregnant, believing the Ouija board, trying to sue the company for no, it's just semen. For father, yeah. yeah, exactly. It happens. It spelled out pregnant. Was so super. Oh, so it did spell out pregnant. Well, it's like Jeff Jody loved that. Now, the guy, Jeff Howe. Oh, they should interview Jeff Howe. He's a retired police officer. That's that's who the board spelled out. Jeff Jody, Jody Love Dead. Every time I see him, I mention that whole thing, and he just clams right up. Hmm. He won't even talk about it because he's that disturbed about yeah. it that night, thinking that it was all of us playing a prank on him, and then for him to propose to take that ring out of his pocket, and she turned him down and dumped him. It was like, whoa. Hmm. He was like, the freaking yeah. goosebumps again, man. One, it's, one thing that's always been a head-scratcher for me, I mean, how can society put the Ouija board in a category of being so evil and, and something that could cause all these problems but at the same time, hey, it's a toy. You can buy it on your shelf in your local store. I mean, how can we be on so different sides of the spectrum? Well, it was that? marketed that way as a toy. But why? How else are you going to market it? Uh -huh. Look, they at, made look a at the folklore money. that's attached to it. 
I mean, yeah. look, look at what we're talking about right here in this right. interview. The potential dangers, the possessions, people that are getting their lives, you know, turned upside down by things like this. Well, I compare it to like a crystal ball. People use crystal balls as another medium to communicate with the dead and predict the future. But if Hasbro came along and marketed the crystal ball, it'd be one in every house. It just hasn't been marketed as a paranormal or afterlife invention for that. You can find a crystal ball on a great shelf in a shop in Salem. And everyone sees the crystal ball and, and there's only one reason for it. It's, it's because people used to gaze in them in the days. And if you, if you picture the old gypsy, you know. But if Hasbro came along and marketed a crystal ball, but a, a $4 version of it, there'd be one in every closet. Yeah, it's true. Well, to me, it's all an invitation. I mean, whether you're talking about a K2 meter or a Ouija board, it's all an invitation to communicate with the other side. So I don't know how they can possibly classify it as a toy if it's being used you know, primarily for, for what we're all talking about. But this is a Hasbro documentary, so I don't think they want us bashing it. <laughs> no, no, it's not a Hasbro documentary. <laughs> yeah, no, it's totally not. Oh, it's they not? just no. need to be part of it. Okay. So, yeah. We're all the first right, people so to ever film in there, but... They, oh, they so they're never... not sponsoring this. No. no. So so who's paying for it? So I will tell you this. Hi. 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 Oh, so this really is your yeah. project. This is totally indie. That's why, you know, we really get the real story. This is exactly what we want. And they know we're... Oh, I didn't know like if we should just like... Oh, no. So, I'll tell you, there's two two things, and then you can both like respond to them. Um, one is since 1967, 13 million Ouija boards have been produced. The second thing to respond to is that um, Hasbro and Universal Pictures are working on a movie. So they're working on a movie that's going to be released. It's supposed to be next year. So clearly, there's interest. Are they trying to spark interest? Like, what do you think of ongoing marketing and? Want to go first? That's a really good question. What do I think of ongoing marketing? I think the beauty about the Ouija board is it markets itself. We don't really see too many commercials on TV about the Ouija board at all. What kind of network would air it? You know, it's one of those taboo things like, ooh, it's bad. Yet, it's a great seller and it's a very profitable piece of board game merchandise, if you'll call it. Um, there really hasn't been any new stuff about the board it's just passed down from generation to generation and, and children speak about it and it's one of those things uh, like Bloody Mary and Light as a Feather passed down to generation just from talking about it. Ouija boards will always be here. Um, oh, you know what I want to do? I want to talk about like something or you and I talked about it, how we I wanted to work with MIT students yeah. about some research perfect how does that tie into the future of the Ouija board well, like, is that another question or? No, we have a question like do yeah. you think that the um, Ouija board is something that should be researched and studied yes. by professionals and kind of try to figure out why yeah, it works. I'm dying to talk about that and we'll get you'll, you'll get the answer yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. go for it go for it, um, yeah. roll. it this is just something that has to get done and I really want to work with you on this um, the, the future of the Ouija board is just so wide open. You know, you got everyone looking for ghosts, but not a lot of people in this country are really doing a lot of work with Ouija boards. I would love to work with some uh, MIT or Worcester Polytech Institute students as a project, and this could be a very futile project for them for, for a research project. I would love to do some studies on the Ouija board use. I would love to actually thermal studies, um, x-ray technology, just kind of find out what is pushing that planchette. We already know that something is. Is it us? Is it our energy? Or is it something supernatural pushing it? And if so, can that energy be measured? It has to be measured. I mean, there's no way that somewhere down the line someone's not going to know this answer. I want to be the first to find out, you know, can we scientifically document what is pushing that planchette and spelling out these messages? Well, and you've actually came up with something to kind of start that process. Yep. So talk a little bit um, about that. Should I just kind of like pull it out of my ass or just sure, leave it here? Sure, whatever. I mean, yep, yep. Well, I just happen to have it right here, Bob. <laughs> um, what a coincidence. <laughs> and if you call now. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, there's more. There's more. <laughs> there's um, I, I just want to show you off the record here. Um, when the when the pressure to contact the spirits is just too much. It's. We got to um, show this to Hasbro, we're, man. You're totally... I don't know if you can see this here, but you just yeah, fantastic. You've got connections over there. We got to talk about that. Maybe they'll buy my idea. It's a great idea. Well, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you want to reinvent the wheel? I, I mean, I, it's I, it's a comp 
late 2011 version of the old-fashioned planchette. It, yeah, it's, it's one of the things that I, I'm very interested in in my own research. The concept of that particular problem. So, again, that's something that I think has to come from within. Yeah, I often say to people um, when they when they talk about how the Ouija board is bad or they had a bad experience, I, I say like, okay, so we get on the phone and you and I, we have this conversation and it gets really nasty and we call each other names and say horrible things about each other and then we hang up the phone. When we're done with the conversation, you don't take your cell phone and throw it out the window and say, I will never have one of these in my house again. Right. <laughs> But it so happens with a Ouija board, you have a bad conversation, and it's like, boom, that thing's like a, you know. Because yeah. that's, that's everybody's natural instinct to get rid of the thing that just produced evil or it, suspense. It, with it taking themselves out of the equation, where right. it's, I often say people should look at who's communicating. The board is not. The board is right. just the telephone that you're using. You're communicating with something else, and somehow the board is the evil thing, or, or what has happened, or what has gone wrong. It's just well, fascinating. Thing. It's a perfect example of how fear has blocked uh, right. Forward thinking. When Poltergeist came out, the movie, how many people across America covered up their television screens at, before they went to bed <laughs> with a blanket? Because they were so afraid in the middle of the night that screen was going to pop on. It, it's just all superstition. And, you know, and, we've solved, fear. and we've solved that problem with um, satellite and cable TV where there's no white noise anymore. Yeah. <laughs> right? It's always going. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, why are all these good. people running around possessed now? Um, what do you guys think about this idea that, you know, uh, from quantum physics, you know, the hardest science you really can get, they'll talk about the idea that thoughts are reality or this, this slit experiment where, where the observer changes the nature of an atom. Or the entanglement idea where an atom separated, an electron separated from another electron a million miles away. If you do something to one electron, it affects the other. Mm -hmm. So what do you think of this idea that perhaps the Ouija board is a, uh, a great example of the placebo effect where, where thoughts are becoming reality and this mm -hmm. is kind of a tool to do that. Any, any thoughts on that, on that at all? How do I word that into a question to start that out? Give me an example of how I should start that sentence out. Oh, do you, uh, is, it, is it a tool for bringing, for, is, it a, is, it, is, right? is it an actualizer Can the for reality? Can it make class? thoughts yeah. a, a, mm -hmm. into things? Yes, okay. um, I've often wondered if the Ouija board can affect our thoughts. If our thought, did I just say that backwards? Yeah, backwards. Yeah. Okay, let's start that off. It definitely can affect your thoughts, right? <laughs> a woman answering a question with a question? Mm -hmm. All right, <laughs> shut up. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> uh, you even got the film guy laughing on that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, uh, I've often wondered if, if our thoughts can manipulate a Ouija board session, so subconscious messages could come through. Uh, however, physically, when I've gotten success with a Ouija board and a planchette, the answers that came out had nothing to do with me. You know, there were names being pulled out on the board, dates, um, usually unusual circumstances about a person's death. That's how they usually present themselves with circumstances, how they pass, to talk about them a little bit. And then my session experiences tend to lead into question and answer. Then it's about me. You know, what kind of answers am I going to get out of this to sort of just to throw it out there, because everybody does it. You know, they start answer, am I going to be rich? Am I going to fall in love? Questions like that. But subconscious thoughts, in my experiences, I've never seen come through on a Ouija board. Um, I don't think that really the spirit that's communicating with you is worried about what's in our head, because when the sessions start off, again, they're talking about themselves. Um, do I believe that they could absolutely get in our head? Yes because that spirit does know specific answers to questions that we're asking that only we would know. That's a fact. And it, it's unpredictable. It doesn't happen every time uh, on cue, but just my experiences only, um, they're very knowledgeable, whoever's speaking to us, you know, as far as what may happen. And it's random. You know, are they going to talk about your friends? Are they going to talk about how many people are, are in your bedroom at the time? It, it's bizarre because you don't know what they're going to say. Um, I, I just have to add, I know I'm going off this subject, but I don't want to not talk about this. What was amazing um, during a Ouija board session uh, that we were filming was the planchette was moving about the board. So one of the investigators said, can you spill out your name? And with our eyes, we saw it go to an R, and then we saw it move to an I, and then a C. It spelled out the name Richard. Upon reviewing the audio tapes later on, 
all of our recorders caught this. It was amazing. Before it started going out to the R, in the I, in the C, you heard a man say, Richard. And then the planchette started to spell an R and I. So there's natural process of steps. There's the spirit speaks physically, which we may or may not catch. It depends if you're recording or not. But the same night, it happened again with the name George. What is your name? Started to spell a G and then an E, and you heard the man say, George, in a completely different man's voice, where there was no men present during the session. Absolutely unbelievable. And so that thought process, there's steps, you know, it actually, you, we were able to hear the spirits speaking physically, and then taking the energy to move the planchette. So how is that possible that that might have been coming from our minds? We weren't thinking George or Richard, somebody was actually speaking it that we couldn't hear with our ears, and then moving it. So that was just completely a message coming from its own. Neat. It was. It was neat. I. I've never seen anything like it when. When that happened. A lot of people um, talk that Ouija boards open up doors or portals. Do you believe that uh, a Ouija board opens up doors or portals? And do you think? Where do you think those are? Are they in you? Are they in the board? What's happening? You know what I mean. I hate going on hearsay though. Like mm -hmm. a lot of this, because I haven't experienced it myself as hearsay. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I have heard the stories of people using a Ouija board and that they possibly opened up a portal um, or some kind of vortex. Uh, if they did that, in my opinion, I feel that the spirits were already there. Um, it, it depends on the situation. It's very possible that someone may have well during a session invited something again to come and happen. I don't feel that the typical Ouija board user is just going to open up a portal or vortex. It's a very, very, very deep, phenomenal situation I don't know enough about to, to honestly answer. Do I feel that this happens every time? No. Um, why would certain households have portals and, and some other? What is a portal? Um, do I believe that the, the human, the, the person themselves becomes a portal? No. Um, then you you would see them exp uh, you would actually see the person uh, showing symptoms of having some other kind of spiritual warfare going on, which doesn't happen. Um, I in my studies I've seen pictures of portals. I've heard audio of portals, and these are coming from some pretty big experts in the field in in the field of EVP um, consults from the movie White Noise. Um, the woman, uh, she, it was an amazing lecture, and she showed me the first photograph I've ever seen of an actual portal. And we heard the audio that went along with it. It was amazing to me. And I still look at that and say, that's impossible. How is that possible? This weird energy thing, this whole other realm that I have to, have to learn about. But that portal was a physical portal. That portal was there, outdoors, that she showed us. It was not created by Ouija board use. Uh, but some people believe all around me that if you go into a cemetery, we just learned this the other day,